This is an Ellis Mowers and More small engine repair. Stay connected on Instagram and Facebook at Ellis Mowers and More. Comments or questions? Leave them below or email me, ellis at ellismowers.com. Parts used in today's repair are found using the links in the description below. And as always, like and subscribe for more small engine content. Today, we've got in the garage John Deere LX188. If you watch my new intro video for the mower vlogs, this is the video, or this is the machine that's highlighted in me going to get and loading it on the trailer and evaluating, you know, just little quick clips in the open. I've had this mower about a year. I got it for free. I do know that it runs on starter fluid. It's got a liquid cooled 17 horsepower Kawasaki on it and no hood. But the rest of the mower, including the seats, in really good shape. And I hated that I've had to pop it outside and I've been neglecting it since I got it because I wanted to turn this one around pretty quickly. But after I had that LX279 John Deere that I had all of those issues trying to get the fuel and spark and whatever else is going on with it last year, kind of left a sour taste in my mouth and needed to take a little bit of time off. Plus I had a other machines that probably were a little bit quicker flips. So now it's this mower, uh, mower's turn and we're going to see what we need to do to it. I do know that I want to put an entire new fuel system on it, starting with the carburetor all the way back with the fuel lines, and we're going to clean out the fuel tank as well. I will show you the parts mower that I have uh, and how I acquired it, and we'll get uh, started working on this. I'll show you what we got and see what uh, we get ourselves into with this. Fingers crossed that uh, we don't run into any like vapor lock issues, uh, coil issues, or anything like that. Let me show you the donor mower that uh, may need some parts, and then we'll get diving into this. The donor mower is this one. This is an LX177. It's got a 15 horsepower liquid cooled Kawasaki, so a little bit less. But what's going to come off of this are definitely these rear tires because they hold air, number one. The other ones are just trashed on that other mower. Uh, this transmission has basically leaked all of its fluid out. But there could be some other various things, like if I need coils or anything of that nature, uh, I can steal them off of this and be okay. The seat's trash on it. There's too many parts missing off of this to try and revive this. When I bought it, it still had the 38-inch deck on it. That deck went to an LX277 that had a rotted-out deck, and but ran just fine otherwise, uh, so I could get that one out the door. Uh, so this is sitting out here. Once uh, I finish with uh, the one in the garage, uh, we're done with this. So I think I said it right in the video. Uh, LX188 that's what we're working with here and again you can see the tires are done on this all the dry rock cracks that your heart can desire on this thing is though this seat has zero rips or tears in in it which is great the everything I mean, this was stored in a barn for I don't know how long but I had it sitting outside, and it's got a bunch of pine straw everywhere now. So I've done my best to blow it off and clean it off as much as I can. I did pressure wash it when I originally got this mower. So it is clean. We're ready for it to work, be worked on. Like I said, it does run. Biggest thing that I am looking for is, or looking at, is the uh, transaxle leaks a little bit. We'll probably put some uh, stop leak uh, Lucas in there along with some new fluid. But one thing I'm concerned about is the gas tank. I think there's a ton of junk in that gas tank. So there is no getting around this. We got to take the gas tank out of this. We're going to do the whole, while we're doing this, we're going to do the whole fuel system top to bottom starting with the carburetor. 
So in order to get all that taken care of, we've got to get this off. And part of that requires getting the seat mechanism off here, which shouldn't be too difficult because I think it's just these two uh, wing nuts that I already had most of the way off here. So we'll take those off. This should lift the seat off. And we're already a decent portion of the way there. So these are attached to the fender. They're not attached anywhere else. Looks like we've got, what would that be? Half inch uh, right here. Two bolts would take off the rear portion of this fender. And then the front portion of this fender should be taken off by a couple other half inch bolts that may exist underneath the little rubber treads here. So I will get those bolts off to when we get to the point that we're taking off this fender you'll rejoin me so i think we're at the point of taking this off you have to take the height adjustment knob off which i just had to pull it out so and then the two uh you don't have to take these rubber treads off i don't think it's just a nut that you take off right here same on the other side and i think we're free to get this thing off i used to be intimidated by getting these fenders off i didn't once you realize they're like four bolts to hold them on, ain't that big of a deal. But here we go. There ain't much to these guys. This is a lot less involved than that uh, 277, which is nice. So... We can look at the transmission and all that good stuff while we're here. Probably going to pressure wash everything once I get it running. I can drive it up there and wash it off. Uh, what else we got going on here? Fuel line. Again, with this being like a mower from, I think, the mid-90s, you know it needs changing. Gas tank. Pretty small. Not a big gas tank here. For what it is. And the, uh, let's see what we've got here with the, oh yeah, that, uh, that transmission reservoir is bone dry, sorry for the sun glare, but, so, I mean, look, not much to these, is it? Uh, deck wise everything's free on it uh the deck may yeah we'll check the tension spring uh we might have to do a little something with that uh in terms of the tension or pulley now what needs to happen let's follow the line along the fuel line here fuel line goes up underneath the dash right there tucks kind of in that area goes up here and across to a fuel filter over to the mechanical fuel pump and then over to the carburetor from there so that's where we're at uh y'all see me do a bunch of fuel lines and stuff probably gonna take this fuel tank and clean it on the inside we'll clean all this up on the outside as well if i can get this into a rolling chassis i'll probably change these tires out i might roll it up there uh, while i'm working on the gas tank and just clean the mess out of this too so i will be back Again, I'm going to put new fuel lines. We'll check the pickup tube on this. We might be able to do that right now, actually. As 
So I have to put a new, oh good. We'll have to put a new fuel tank grommet in it too, so. And there's the gas. Gas tank's free, so that's nice. We'll make sure there's uh, very little, if any, junk down in that tank. We'll do a lot of work off camera. When I get to the point where this is clean, the new fuel lines are on, and the tank is back in, we'll move on to uh, the carburetor. So we're looking a lot better now. Washed all of this under uh, top of the frame off. Did my best to get as much grease off of everything as I could. That grease is pretty caked on. Uh, but we're in a much, much better position now to replace everything. Again, what we're going to do, we've got the fuel pickup here and the 90. Hopefully we can keep that. We'll replace the fuel grommet. We'll replace the fuel line all the way up through the frame up to... Uh, the fuel pump and then from the fuel pump to the carburetor and hopefully that's everything that we're going to need So for those curious the date code looks like it's uh, 05 of 96 on this so The s'more was made in a rough right eh, right around 1996. We got the new tires on it and lo and behold the decks turning freely too so that's a good sign, as long as the PTO works. I'm pretty sure it does. I think I remember I hear, hearing it click whenever I hooked a battery up to it. We do need to fix the deck on it a little bit. I have one nut that's missing, which I'll take off of the LX over there. The gas tanks are drying up in front of the truck. Uh, the one off of the 178 is in better condition than the one that came off of this. So that gas tank is going to go in to here and we'll have to top off the reservoir put a lot of probably put quite a bit of stop leak in this thing to hopefully get it to where it's not leaking out the bottom and once we do that man hopefully we can uh we'll get to the carburetor and hopefully we'll be able to start this thing up and hear it run and cut and do all that good stuff that's going to be exciting here are the fuel lines and everything off here one thing that I do want to show, I suppose, the fuel line that goes from the fuel pump to the carburetor is this braided line. I wish I had braided line. I'm going to try a regular line. I know that is acting as a little bit of a heat shield, but the thing is, that's actually higher than the unbraided fuel line or unshielded fuel line. Well, it's got this plastic sheathing on it, but I can't imagine that it shields a ton of heat just from that we'll put that back on that kind of goes around from where the fuel filter is up to uh, the inlet on the fuel pump this fuel pump looks like it's got a bunch of crud inside and i don't want to take the chance of gumming up a carburetor y'all know how many issues i had with that lx279 so when i had when i was doing that 279 knowing that this one was coming down uh, the pipe pretty soon after at least i thought i already got a carburetor and a new fuel pump for it so they were already here just waiting for me and now it's that time in terms of getting the carburetor off can be a little tricky uh what needs to happen i think it's a little bit easier than on some of the kawasaki sometimes these bolts will actually get messed up in the plastic shroud here and break off the plastic shroud i don't think that's going to happen with this one i hope i didn't just jinx myself 10 millimeters right here two 10 millimeters right here when i get to that point that should allow us to take this elbow off and then we'll get to the point of being able to actually take the carburetor off in terms of taking the fuel pump off it's two 12 millimeters i'm going to go ahead and do that as well we were at that point taking off the fuel pump which like i said was just two 12 millimeters one mistake i made was that i forgot to put the spacer back on when i put a new fuel pump back on that lx279 and destroyed the fuel pump so don't forget that spacer you can attempt to remove that gasket but if it looks in good shape then i wouldn't worry about replacing it 
those uh, gaskets that come with it are them cheap blue ones. If you need a carb or a fuel pump, I'll have a couple of Amazon affiliate links below. So I've taken off the two 10 millimeters on the top here and the two 10 millimeters on the side. We're pulling out the little plastic elbow. And then what that does is it actually reveals the carburetor, Ow. which we can pull out as well. Uh, what gets tricky here is the linkages because they'll, they'll try and bind up on you. Uh, you've got the throttle linkage, you've got both linkages up top here, and you want to do, you can do this without actually having to take off this little shroud, because you got the radiator, the shroud, under it, it's just, you don't want to have to do that. So, I'll set you on the tripod, we'll get this thing off. Here we go! This may take a little bit of finagling. I wanted to show you because it's one of the trickier ones to get off here. But it can be done. You just have to be really, really careful. So, and you might have to do a little bit of, not bending, but work, working it on this a little bit in order to get it off. So, we're going to try and get what this is the choke linkage off first. Again, like I said, not the easiest to get off, and what we're going to do, I can't exactly remember how we got them off originally, but looks like I can take, can I take this choke linkage off? It looks like I can unbolt this choke linkage here. And that might buy us a lot of space. Up just a little bit. So I think this just how it houses the I think it houses both the throttle and the choke linkage, so it houses at least the choke. And what that does is it allows us to get it off with this. There is a governor spring back here. The throttle is linked to the governor, obviously, so that is going to be the trickiest part of this whole thing. But what we can do, I think we could just, there we go, the throttle uh, link has just popped off, which is great. So, and then the choke should just come on off too now that we've got it free. So there we go. So that thing's off now. Uh, in terms of the throttle, Looks like the spring just goes in the same hole as the throttle hole, unlike uh, some, a lot of other makes of the engines. So that little throttle plate was made it super easy to get this thing off. Uh, what we need to do now, we might look inside it, but I didn't want to take any chances because I spent weeks, weeks, trying to figure out that other one. And I wasn't going to be playing... Uh, I'm going to nip this one in the bud, so to speak. I did not want to be battling a carb on another liquid-cooled John Deere. That's why I just went ahead and ordered one for this one. So we've gotten those linkages off. And we are going to install <clears throat> excuse me, a new carburetor now. <clears throat> So, choke linkage, we do need gaskets, don't we, which we have. They look like they're both the same, essentially. Now, one of them's got a little tab on the top. That one was the one that goes on the outside. So this is the one that goes inside. I think that surface is pretty clean. Everything will mate up to it like it needs to. Okay, so the one without the little knob thing on the top is the one. So the one that's got the little thing on the top here is the one that goes on the outside of the carburetor. 
we'll go ahead, let's see. So, I think, let's see, so we took it off of this. The linkages, I'm sure I'll do something wrong in this case, but we'll, we'll correct it. Need to be vulnerable sometimes, right? And I'm pretty sure that the straighter portion of the linkage went on this. So that's that. We'll have this over. We've got to get the spring in to the hole as well as the linkage. That will come here in just a second. We'll get the choke linkage on first. That way we can work on the hardest of the two which is going to be the throttle linkage. All right, before I take a step back, let's make sure I've done everything that I need to. It looks like it. So we'll go ahead and slide this back. Now the hardest part by far of this is going to be getting the throttle linkage and spring back onto the gov uh, back onto the actual uh, governor arm here. So let's see what we can do. Got to get it right at the right angle. Oh, we can pull it back a little bit. That, that, that should work. There we go. So we got it on. Sorry if my head's been in the way. The only thing left to do now is get the spring on. That's a tight fit back there. And I probably got to get where the camera is. Let's see. I just gotta get that spring on and then I'll just be able to push everything back. I'll bolt that back on and then uh, I will catch y'all. Uh, I'll, I'll show the fuel pump on camera too. All right, so a little bit of, <clears throat> excuse me, needle nose pliers got it on. Just popped it right in the throttle hole there. So now we're clear to put everything back on like it needs to be. And we have a couple of 10 millimeters. I'll, I'll show you all the whole process. I do this sometimes to show you that I actually think I halfway know what I'm doing around here. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I just explain and talk and don't show. So we're going to put couple of 10 mils back in here. Kind of match it up to where it was previously here. Oop, y'all are in the way. All right. Now, we'll get the elbow back on so the elbow has an o-ring that goes inside it we also need to add a gasket here Ooh. definitely a universal gasket huh they're the same yeah they're basically the same same That'll work still. We're going to pop this in just like so. We can go ahead and put, hook the breather tube back up if we want to. And now, oh, I know why. I put the wrong gasket on. That was my fault. That was a fuel pump gasket. I do have the right gasket. We'll go to the fuel pump gasket in just a second. This is the correct gasket that goes in here. That's much better. Now we can slide the elbow on. Just like so. Now what needs to happen is, uh, we can put the nuts back on. For this.
Don't go too tight because you don't want to break the plastic elbow there. But now we go inside of this. And it's a couple of threads, but it ain't many. And you gotta get the, may loosen these up a little bit to give me more room. So you can see how small of an area you've got to work with when it comes to putting these back on. And so you put these screws back on Oh, come on now. So we'll put these bolts back on and we'll move on to the fuel pump next. Fuel pump's really easy. Just make sure your block is on. We're going to do the little sandwich thing here. So we'll put the fuel pump in like this. Then we'll put a gasket on. Let's see. And then we're going to go ahead and put the block on too. Let's see if we can just squeeze everything up in there. Just like so. And of course you probably can't, but. I might have to adjust the carb bowl over a little bit. Let me do that so that this little piece is not in the way of us getting it in. And, uh, do I have the right tool now? Oh, yeah, we do. Let's do it right now. Just need to twist this carb bowl over just a little bit. Just like that. Now let's try it again. After I get this fuel pump on, I won't bore y'all with install, etc., etc. I'll just put the fuel line on. We'll give her a shot after that. Put the fuel tank on too. stuff screwed in. A couple of 12 millimeters. Screw the other side in here. Remember to put that spacer plate in there because if you don't, you're going to toast your fuel pump. I have learned the hard way. One other thing is these fuel pumps are kind of universal, so I've got to bend this out a little bit in order to get the fuel line in on the other side of the valve cover. So that's that. <clears throat> so at this point, I think we can plug this in, just like a solenoid. We have throttle cable. Actually, I think the throttle cable needs to go under this. There we go. And then, so now all it's a matter of doing, and this is what I do. 
is I try not, my best not to cut the fuel lines, more so because if I cut them to the same length as the others, then there's really no guessing games here. So that's a good thing. Another thing I'm gonna do is the fuel tank grommet, you can see is kind of toast. I keep all I keep these on hand a lot, so I'll chuck that one. And then I was able to get it off of the 90 degree thing, which seems to be uh, the pickup seems to be intact, not leaking anywhere. So that's a positive also. So now all that's left is to cut the fuel lines to length, put them on where they need to on the mower, and gas tank wise, one other thing I wanted to uh, touch on. I did my best to clean these tanks. Uh, but my small pressure washer bit the dust, so I had to use the big one. And this thing right here will run all over the place. So I got at least the top portion of it clean. There's not going to be any dirt or contaminants getting in it from the top. This is the one that came out of it. It was dirtier than the one that was on the 178. So I'm just going to pop the 178 gas tank in. Your fuel, fuel grommet goes right there. Obviously, gas cap goes right there. And it sits in the back. I'll show you all the completed setup once I get all of that put together and we'll uh, be almost at the point to start it at that point I think. I think it's almost that time to start it up see what's going on. Again I put the fuel lines in. Uh, the one fuel filter I had seemed like it was a little bit clogged it didn't blow a lot of air through this one even though it is cloudy on the outside i blew air through i shook it i didn't feel any debris and this is a john deere air filter so it is or a fuel filter looks just like the other one that i have so we've got a that's just water from where it was sitting in a bucket fuel tank back on fuel line is routed again like it's supposed to be. I have topped off the hydrostatic transmission oil because I believe it was leaking just a little bit. Just a little bit. The deck is free. Everything that I can see anyways, which is good. And it's going to turn to the, that direction, so that's good. Get the pine straw out of here. Um, one thing I will need to do is still fix this nut here. And I've got a couple of pieces of pine straw in the muffler. I'm going to scrape these out. And I've got the air filter off because I do want to try and start, prime it with some carb spray to see if I can get it to start and run without the need for an air, uh, without the running down the battery too much. <sighs> get all that blown out right there. I'm going to fish out that little bit of pine straw so this thing doesn't catch on fire when the muffler gets hot. We'll start her up. Alright guys, here we go. I'm going to prime it with a little bit of carb spray. Might have to do this a couple of times. something with the choke. Hmm. Hmm. 
Man, that's coming out of the top of the carb too. Whoa, that's a little dangerous. Is the fuel pump too strong? I do know it's pumping really good, but it's dumping out the top. Hmm. Hey, we got the premise though. Oh, we might have to put the old carb on it. I wouldn't think that the fuel pump would be pushing it too too hard up through there. That is a possibility. That fuel pump is working incredibly well though. Decision making, or not decision making time, but troubleshooting time, so to speak. What causes the overflow? Fuel to overflow. Usually it means it's getting way too much fuel. Could be a needle and seat thing. I'll work on it a little bit, see if I can figure it out. Alright, so here's what I've done to not burn my garage down. Number one, I brought it out here. Number two, I put a uh, line, an extended line that's not just a right angle line, down through the frame down here. So if it deposits any gas, it's going to deposit it under the engine onto the ground as opposed to right on top of the muffler. You're asking for trouble with that. So it may just be a stuck needle and seat. I tap the carb bowl to see if that does anything. If not, we might take this brand new carburetor off and see what's going on with it with the needle and seat. Might put the original carb on. We'll see what happens. out really bad actually you can see it dripping down there in the bottom interesting try it one more time real quick it's doing it is just absolutely pouring out the bottom so I will alleviate the gas out of the bowl and we'll take it off see if there's something going on with this float inside this thing oh that's frustrating I thought I was getting ahead by doing what I did obviously not so what I think is going on here is that the needle and seat I don't think the seat or the needle and seat are attaching all the way just because of the way the float is right there I don't feel it like coming to an end so what I'm gonna do is bend actually bend the tab to lower the float a little bit I'm gonna try and do this on the mower so I don't have to take it off it's gonna be a little bit tight but we're gonna try it We just gotta get off the little pin here. Let's not lose anything. Okay, needle and seat, let's go. See, see this little metal tab here? We're gonna bend it up some so that it contacts the seat a little earlier. and contacts the like I said contacts the seat a little earlier at a lower point as it right as the float rises. Now if this doesn't work we might have to go back to the drawing board. We'll get the float back in here. Why 
lined it up with everything. Now the float's contacting the seat right there. I'm wondering if that was our issue, was that the float was set too high. So now, let me see if I can finagle this back on without having to take anything off. What's pulling it down? Now y'all probably couldn't see too much right there. Hopefully y'all are able to see enough. Oh, you might be able to see enough. We'll get this 10 millimeter tightened up. And we'll try it again, I suppose. Alright, I hope that works. I hope y'all saw a little bit of it. Let's see if we can get it running again. Do need to prime it. I'll give it a little carb spray to help it. Okay. just pouring it out oh man it almost makes me want to change the um, work on the original carburetor it's like it's overwhelming it though which is just really weird man Let me look at this old carb, see if that helps any matters. Like I said, it's like it's it's like it's getting overwhelmed. That's not a fuel pump issue because the fuel pump if the fuel pump was uh having diaphragm issues, it'd be pouring gas out of that little opening there. So might look at the original carb, see if I can get that cleaned up. Y'all see me slap this one on. So I may pop that other carb on and see what's going on with it because it's just it is just pouring gas out so well take three now if carb overflows this time i think i might change the fuel pump back i think it'll run with this carb i just you know i'm so wary because i had that issue with the 279 where it would never run right with that uh, other carb on it especially when it got hot so let's see what this might do safety switch has been uh, disabled on this so uh, <laughs> it 
shall I try to move it and drive a little bit? I do need to put the heat shield back on the front too. Unbelievably quiet. here and see if the blades will turn on for us. I just want to get it out of the kind of out of the way. Fingers crossed. We had to put the original carburetor back on it. It's got a ton of junk to burn off of the muffler down here. But look, listen to how listen to how good it runs. Idles down like it needs to. This one is so much quieter than that 279. That's fantastic. I'm going to get the fender and everything back on it, and I think we'll be in good shape. We'll drive it around a little bit, might cut with it a little bit. Awesome. You want to go for a ride on this thing? Finally got it, I think. Let's see if it'll crank up for us again. Look at that. Thing's been sitting there like 30 minutes fired right up that's amazing tell you what let's just like i said let's just take a ride listen to this transmission well it was quieter <laughs> it drives really nice though this thing's so quiet so quiet Reverse switch work, or did they? Oh, they bypass that too. That's good. Fantastic. Got to loosen up the. 
steer it a little bit. Probably grease up the front end. I think it's time. I think it's time for a belt on this thing. But the premise is the same. It still runs, cuts, drives. Fast little thing too. I think we're done with uh, this portion of the video so look it even idles down like it's supposed to can't ask for any better than that let's wrap this video up so there it is I know part one has been lengthy I hope y'all enjoyed it though um, a lot of show and tell so to speak a lot of how to and what not to do a little bit uh, when I got this like I mentioned that was when I was in the midst of that LX279 that I was having all of the problems with. And so I said, okay, I'm going to go ahead and get a new fuel pump, new carburetor, so I'm not dealing with that anymore. Well, it turns out the new carburetor was leaking over the top in the overflow and wasn't good. So what have we done so far? We swapped the tires out. Um, we put a fuel pump on, all new fuel lines, cleaned the fuel tank, put it back together, put a battery in it and that's about it we do need to do an oil change still we need to sharpen the blades we need to put belts on it we're going to touch up the deck make it look a little bit better all in all though not having a hood is going to kill the value of this thing um, probably going to get 400 bucks out of it that's probably what i'm going to have to list it for in order to get it gone uh, probably won't go for any more just because of the hood it's crazy this thing right here once i put belts and stuff on it this thing right here will outlast anything new that you can get it's just kind of a shame i've got the covers and stuff too for the top i'll show you the final product when it comes to that i hope y'all enjoyed this video um i'll put i'm not gonna put a carb link but i'll put a fuel pump link down below for amazon associates uh you can buy it off of there uh part two is going to come we'll put some belts on this thing and get it in good running order we'll fit we'll fix the deck get it level adjust uh, uh we're gonna paint the front of it a little bit make it look a little nicer but that's about all um super easy to work on this thing i was afraid of the engine but man that thing runs like a top with the original carburetor nonetheless that i barely even had to that i just broke open the salt was really clean put it back together gave it a couple little bit of sprays with carb spray just to make sure put it back together ready to rock and roll thank you all again for watching and we'll catch you on part two when we make this thing uh, not bulletproof, but uh, lasting for a long, long time to come. Y'all take care.